So we've just arrived at Lewin Lighthouse. Pretty good lighthouse keeping accommodation. There were three of them. The two of them were made of, um, I think it was sandstone or something, limestone, and one of them was made of granite, um, obviously for strength. And they had these pitched roofs, really pitched roofs, which were designed to handle the um, the wind conditions a lot better. So this is just the veranda of number two. This is rather cute. Or built of Lego. All right, we've just uh, come out of the uh, the main purchase area, the first um, lighthouse keepers accommodation. The second one that you can see there, that's a uh, an interpretive centre. Now I would to put some uh, uh, money into that. That's really nice. It's really informative and uh, highly recommended to go and get into that. And the problem I wasn't there long enough because the uh, lighthouse tour is up very, very soon, so we're on our way. And then that last one is the third lighthouse keeper's accommodation. So, uh, yeah, quite a, uh, what, do you, what would you call it? It's kind of like a, a desolate place. Yes, very, very remote, 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 remote. desolate place, and you've got to. Uh, yeah, try and keep yourself occupied out here and yeah, pretty lonely back then in the uh, late 1800s. Anyway, go and wait for our tour of the lighthouse. Hopefully I don't trip up. So behind me, Cape Lewin Lighthouse. It is the largest lighthouse in Western Australia and it's the third largest or tallest lighthouse in Australia and it's 56 meters tall. Boom! Alrighty, Cape Lewin was one of the first lighthouses in Australia and the world to use the Chance Brothers Mercury pedestal. The Mercury weighed 156 kilos, all 12 litres of it. It floated on this bed of mercury. This enabled the lens to rotate around every 10 seconds, which was a massive improvement on the old roller bearing pedestal used back in the day. Just get the maker's name just in case I need to give him a call and get one built in my yard. <laughs> he's, long, he's long gone, I suppose. Well, you might have to crash in a different area. Old Birmingham, yeah? Um, where was it going to go over here? Oh, I just wanted to video as you go down. And ask, ask questions. Something like English guy. So I was just going to handle the wind. That's the old winding mechanism. Yeah, now being replaced uh, by the... Weird, right? Um, electric motors and then if we look up and through there if you can make it out you can see the globe here we go LED so this was the bloke with his chart he'd uh, sit at the window there with a telescope and uh, keep an eye on things this used to be the landing where the um, the kerosene was carried up the stairs to Fifty nine. Well, we're already made it to the point where you got the Indian Ocean and the Southern Ocean joining. Somewhere out of me, out there. There's meant to be a current where they're all sort of clashing and yeah. Anyway, amongst the wind waves. 
lot. Getting a guide, they take you up the lighthouse. It's only 20, 21 bucks or something. Um, worth its weight in gold. Um, lots of history. The, the lighthouse itself is gorgeous. They've just done a huge, um, uh, what do you call it, a revamp. It's like um, all the insides have been water blasted, new cabling all running. Man, that looks beautiful. Um, and Jet Silver is working. It's beautiful polished and things, it looks nice so awesome. Pretty freaky out there on the top you, you really get blasted about but uh, the view is just awesome. Wicked. So yeah make sure if you're over this neck of the woods to uh, get an eyeful of the uh, lighthouse here at uh, Cape Blue and it's awesome. So we're gonna go back to our van I think um, I wouldn't mind checking out, um, I just remember there was an old water wheel that was frozen at the time, so hopefully we can um, get down to a little park there, because uh, there's not a lot of parking here for big vans. Uh, if you're lucky enough, there's a couple on the side of the road, if you're towing a trailer and things, but that's uh, pretty, just got to take a lot of luck. So, uh, oh, a couple of little points too, uh, which I might be pulled up in. Um, so, it's the largest lighthouse, or the, the tallest lighthouse. I did mention it's the tallest in Western Australia, or the third tallest in Australia, but uh, there's um, two taller ones, and but they're not on mainland Australia. And I did say 50 something metres, it's only actually just a little over, I think it was about 37 or something, don't quote me, but the 56 metres they quote is from sea level. So how's this? I think 1895. I'm not too sure whether that wood timber is still original. But it was a little spring that would duct the water, the, the flume would duct the water from a little spring down over this water wheel. And this water wheel down here is um, providing water to the lighthouse, especially when it was under construction. It was built in 1895 to supply water for the builders of the lighthouse, Wishart and Davies, and later to the lighthouse keepers' cottages. Limestone for the lighthouse was taken from the nearby Quarry Bay, while water wheel provided water to mix the water. Because the wind was so bad in Cape Lewin, uh, or Augusta, I just thought I'd do a quick little recap. Um, awesome little lighthouse, built um, an open back in 1895. Um, it was 39 meters tall, it had 167 steps. Um, it was about 
two meters wide at the base. I mean, those windows, I mean, hopefully dude's got some photos there. They were thick as at the base. At the top, there was still a meter thick at the top there. The, um, the rock was all mined from a local quarry, which was just down the way, just on the other side of where that, um, what do you call it, that uh, water wheel was. So, um, so obviously while the workers were there doing the water wheel, they had the, uh, doing the rock, they had the water wheel, and then the water wheel was used to uh, keep the lighthouse keepers and the lighthouse all up and going as well. Um, the Cape Lewin is the third most uh, dangerous sort of cape. I think there were some 21 odd ships lost um, before the lighthouse. And then the lighthouse went in, I think only one ship has been lost since the lighthouse and that was questionable on how the, the ship actually was lost. Um, but you'll have to check that one up. Uh, so back in, um, up until 1925, the light was um, uh, powered by a Kira, six Kira lights. So they had to carry the kerosene up to the top and keep those lights burning. It wasn't until 1925 that they turned those kerosene lights, even though it still needed the kerosene, they were vaporized kerosene, which were a lot more economical, a lot more brighter. And it wasn't until 1982 that they changed those kerosene lights into electric lights. Man, 1982. To me, that wasn't too far ago. Um, so then, um, in 1992, everything was automated. So um, not only was it electric, but they um, changed the, um, the mechanism that was turning the, um, the light from the counterweight to fully automated. Um, 2018, they put a sea light LED ar um, array in there, which meant it was a completely different light again, a lot more luminous, a lot more energy efficient and all that sort of stuff. It took 15 years from the time they said we're going to do the lighthouse to the time it was actually commissioned. And that had something to do with when they were doing the foundations. The foundations were only going to be 2.5 meters deep. And um, they found out when they went down, the rock was a little bit porous, a little bit holy in places and it ended up having to go nearly seven meters deep. So they ended up taking another, well, I think there was a thousand cubic meters of earth. Back in the late 1800s, that was a huge amount of work, you know? So yeah, it wouldn't be too bad these days with an excavator, it's a week's work. But that could have been like months worth of work. We, where are we right now? We're in Dardanup. We're on the, um, I think it's the Brockaway, highway we're heading our way to Pimbleton which is that way we could have stayed at Lewin Cape Lewin there there is caravan parks homestays and bits and pieces there's not a lot of uh, free camps and we just needed to get out of that um, the humdrum of where we are in a, a populated area there's there's too much distractions to try and just knuckle down and just enjoy the peace and quiet Jude's in there at the moment, got her under the, she's shackled to the to the table, doing some more internet work. We've got our Starlink going, um, it's pumping. The, the, the problem is some of the free camp stuff where we go to, it's 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 very over overgrown with trees. We don't get a lot of solar and we don't get a lot of Starlink for our satellite. So this is a, a, a great stop, it's, it is near the road edge here. Um, it'll die down at night. I mean, you can probably count the amount of cars that have gone by in the last hour on one hand, or two hands. <laughs> You've probably seen that much right now since I've been talking to you. Um, but yeah, this just gives us better Starlink, it tunes into it, got the solar. So yeah, it's gonna be a reasonable night as long as we don't get too many trucks pulling to this uh, stop. Um, and there's not a lot of stops between here and uh, Albany, I don't think. So we're gonna take advantage of these while we can. Good morning, everybody. Well, we're uh, packing up. Nice to have Judy back, she's on to it. Great little stay, can't remember the name of it. Uh, Judy will post it up there. Um, yeah, so we've got the wagon going. Um, we did a lot of computer work and bits and pieces, nearly flattened our damn battery. And then of course, uh, yesterday was a little bit, um, what do you call it, wet. And uh, we didn't get a lot of solar either. So uh, we had a bit of a, a difficult night last night when we lost power. And uh, also lost bloody gas for the hot water as well. So. Got to try and get all that fixed. So much for the service that we just did on it. Anyway, um, we're making tracks. We're going um, towards um, Pemberton, and uh, it's uh, completely in the dark. Uh, one of the places that I'm going to go, I know that we're probably not going to get up 
and um, but we'll give it a try. We'll give it a crack. We're going to have a look at least we can get some photos and say we've been there. And then um, we'll move on to Pemberton and then maybe back down from Pemberton, heading towards I think it was Northcliffe or something like that. Um, but on our way to Walpole and Denmark. So uh, here we go, saddles up. We made it, made it to Edmonton. Just a quick little whistle stop here. We've got to uh, just grab a, a few little supplies, see if we can get some water in the van, maybe go and check out the swimming pool. Um, but yeah, Pimbleton, beautiful town, um, made back in the days with the, uh, the logging, the milling, and then farming. Now uh, tourists, plenty of walks and camping, and uh, lots of great mountain bike trails too. So we'll check out uh, a couple of them there, and our short little stay here in Pimbleton. All right, made it to the place. I've seen so many postcards. It's picture postcard beautiful. I don't know about whether I'm ready for a swim, but yes, with the cat out of the bag. This is Pimbleton um, Swimming Pool, which is part of a, uh, a river system or a lake system. I don't know too much about it, even though I've heard about it. It looks very pretty. Check this out. The pools were built by our pioneers in 1932 and has evolved over the years. Although the water color uh, is colored, um, it's usually due by the tannins from the eucalyptus tree. It's fresh and flowing all year round. So well done, it looks beautiful. Well, made it to the Dave Evans Bicentenary Tree. Not too sure whether uh, we'll be able to climb it. We'll go and check it out. You count them for me. Apparently there's 182 odd steps. I ain't not counting and I ain't not watching. 65 meters, I'm gonna give it a crack. Look at these, these legs, right? Solid as a rock. You wait until I come on down. They'll be quithering bits of jelly. Go for it. Here we go. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> yep. I don't like how those things bend though as you go up. Where's your husband? Where's he? Is he at the top He's already? Just <laughs> are you not going right up the top, are you? Oh, yeah. You mad? <laughs> dot dot dot. You're making me feel sick just looking at you. <laughs> oh, I forgot to record it. I think you had to come back down and do it all again. <laughs> You realise I'm going to have to speed up the video on this? <laughs> Alrighty, excuse my huffing and puffing. I've made it to the top of the Dave Evans Bicentennial Tree. God, I'm shaking too, my hands. <laughs> but man, what a view! The highest treetop walk or hill or climb in the world. 163 odd meters up onto the canopy here. Man, it's incredible. Check out, check out just down there. You're just looking straight over the top. Obviously all that, that down in a bit of a hillside, a bit of valley and things, but wow, it's cool. All those trees just sitting out here. Oh, I'm up and above them. Here's the, uh, the dunes. Alrighty, just a quick view. I've got to get down because the next ones are coming up. Awesome. Well, that's it. Still shaking like a leaf. Still shaking like a gum leaf. But I did it. I climbed the tree. What a rush. 
that was cool. Got a, well, I don't know whether I'd recommend it for everybody. It is um, challenging. Hey, I've got to take my hat off to a young girl growing up there now, and there's a father with some kids as well. I must be getting old. Anyway, it was good. Loved it. Pleased uh, we took that little extra excursion. So, thanks to Jude's brother Steve for saying you got to do it. Alrighty, I've come out of my high tree, <laughs> just come back down to earth. Man, yeah, that was quite exhilarating that. Highly recommended the old uh, Dave Bicennial tree, Dave Evans. So uh, we're just parked up here at a place called Northcliffe. It's just, uh, well, it was about another 40, 30 odd k's down the road from where I was with the tree. There's a RV friendly park here we can park up at, so we've done that. Dude went to the information centre, which is right here as well. And she's uh, made some inquiries and uh, said we can do this uh, treasure map. It's a little sculpture walk. I don't think it's my kind of bit, but uh, do to love it. And um, who knows? See what I say at the end of it all. I might have to change my mind, eh? Stick with it. Right, Northcliffe Information Centre. Go there, pay your money at the old counter and you get to do a sculpture walk. This is number one of the sculpture walk right here, this arch. So uh, it's called the, the Southern Forest Sculpture Walk. And there's 50, I've got the guide, here it is here, the treasure map. And that's the, uh, the little map that you follow. Obviously the kids would absolutely love this, I'm sure. Make sure you give them a map and you've got one for yourself. But uh, yeah, there's 48 on here that we're gonna try and find, so. Uh, Number one, tick. But it's a pretty walk through the uh, through the bush here at uh, Northcliffe. Should be very nice. They even say watch out for the odd snake and things. Not that I'd need to scare anybody off, but the walk looks good. <laughs> Jude, Jude's gone flying past here and never even saw it. I said I'll take a photo of all the ones you miss, honey. Yeah. Looks like I could have a full memory card by the time I get back. It's looking pretty good. Um, it's got something about the, the burnt sculpture or something they call it. There's a there's a guide. Sorry, my face is in the camera at the same time because I'm trying to multiply do it. Oh, did there she's sitting down there. Hey Jude, did you miss one? Which one? She says. Which one? Probably one of the nicest sculptures going. I mean. They obviously didn't put this tree here, it was already here, and somebody's painstakingly gone and done a nice sculpture in the old ashes. Awesome. Let's see her reaction. Did you see that one? No, what one? <laughs> the, hole, oh, the hole in the tree. How beautiful is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> the pennies dropped. <laughs> Gosh, look at these beautiful orange, like a bottle brush. Aren't they beautiful? This one sounds the prettiest, I think. So this trail that we're walking, um, you'll see up above me here, there's uh, that tree there's actually got three people portrayed in that. And I walk this little trail here, um, I'll turn around, but up in that little hollow there, there's two faces up portrayed there, another one just beside me here, and then squeaking down just across the side there, there's another one there. Okay, so these portraits, uh, these portraits of local residents commemorate the catastrophe in 2015. Northcliffe bushfires are out of control for three weeks. 
So each person is depicted, um, was differently affected, including firefighters, those that lost their homes, their livelihood and their sense of security. So yeah, it's got a pretty good meaning on the old walking trail eh? Old recycled books, are they? <laughs> recycled books, timber, screws, and it's basically the recycling going back to where it came from. Oh well, there I am. I'm a changed man. That uh, walk, sculpture walk here at Northcliffe. I was just happily to walk behind with a guide, giving Jude a little bit of guidance on which way to look and giving an extra set of eyes to see if we can find them. And, uh, well, riveting. <laughs> the kids would absolutely love it if you want to bring your kids here. Um, yeah, terrific bit of artwork, well explained. Probably the most fun I've had for ages, but don't tell Jude that. I'll, she'll, she'll never live it down. But uh, yeah, well worth the entry fee. And talk about taking some time. Man, time's just probably needed a torch. <laughs> um, those one or two, what are the horse flies? They were annoying, but um, yeah, other than that, so I'm now I'm gonna try and get out of here. Yeah, Is that the way out? <laughs> Dude, where the heck is Northcliffe? Yeah. Right, you got that one right, didn't you? <laughs> Guess what I got? You got a lamb and mint pie, is it? A steak and kidney. Steak and kidney from great, great little, um, great little bakery down there. Or great, no, great little grocery store down there. Uh, they will be having a bakery next door opening up soon. We're working hard. Great little town. We've just done the trail. We just thought we'd just walk downtown and see what town's got, spend a bit of money and uh, support the locals and return we get to stay over there. <laughs> Sounds good eh? Yep. Alright. Oh, I'm just loving the street, street walk of uh, Northcliffe. It puts a smile on your doll. Um, we had the gas station and the, um, the, the general store around the corner. Then we've got uh, the Kauri Country Good food Foods. That's a really nice shop to go into. There's some nice uh, local grown produce and things there. Certainly there's empty store there. This is a cool place. How's that for name? The Naughty Noodle. <laughs> the Naughty Noodle Bar of this show. Uh, looks like they've got special opening hours. They're not open at the moment. It's, uh, it's only two o'clock, so I'm sure the action will happen later on tonight. We're already home. Just found this little plaque. It's uh, kind of like a tribute to Doc Ryan. So uh, back in the early days there, hospitals, doctors and nurses, none of these existed when settlers first came to districts like Northcliffe. Serious accidents and sickness were common, often fatal in an early farming. Uh, mining days, uh, milling days, they, yeah, wasn't good. The odds weren't good. Had a similar thing uh, way back in, um, uh, where was that, uh, West Onia. Uh, so there was a bloke, uh, Dr. Lionel West, he came here first, uh, 1924. But he died six years later and he was the only resident um, Dr. Northcliffe ever had. Uh, then in 1937, uh, Clifford Doc Ryan came to the region. Doc Ryan served the communities of Northcliffe, Pemberton and Shannon for 43 years. Not only a great practitioner but a gifted surgeon, expertly stitching up counters of countless injuries and delivering over 2,000 babies. So uh, yeah, heads up to people like that. Come and stay in the area, it's cool. Look at that, there's a nice little tribute there with uh, Dr. V hanging on one of the babies. Anyway, onwards. We are moving out. Great stay here at Northcliffe. Thank you very much, Northcliffe. You put on a, a neat little facility down here for us at the 24-hour uh, RV park um, by the Information Centre. And that walk, sculpture walk was good. And trip down the pub um, was very 
um, entertaining to uh, go down there and have a good old talk to the publican and uh, a few of the friendly folks around there. Really nice little town. So, um, and it's becoming more and more um, popular as people want to get out of the big smoke and come to places like these where it's a little bit more quieter and uh, an easier way of life sort of thing. Beaches and far. So yeah, we're heading out of town now and um, just going to go to a, another little road stop, uh, roadside uh, stop like we had uh, a couple of days ago. We're, uh, we haven't had, as you can tell, but, but overcast, there are odd little showers and things. So we haven't had a big, uh, big amount of energy going to our solar. So go somewhere quiet where I can start the generator up and get a good amount of energy into the thing and uh, do a little bit of homework. That's where we're off to. Thanks for watching. Click like, follow and subscribe. Sweet as. Oh. Now it's got to be working. Testing, testing. Um, and I think that's what they call a, a sea light LED array. Oh. Because my notes, you're going to fix this one from here. Because the damn wind is blowing. Where was I? So, they are. Oh, it's not hence. Damn horse flies. Oh, can't win.